Hello, my name is Emily Duffy, and I'm the host of today's podcast of Musings of an Undergrad, PMDD. PMDD stands for Premenstrual Dysphoric Disorder. It is a model case of intersectionality, a point of convergence between psychology and gynecology. Every month during their fertile years, most females experience periods and the side effects that accompany them. Premenstrual syndrome, or PMS, symptoms affect about 90% of females. PMS makes women liable to suffer from cramping, bloating, headaches, and most infamously, moodiness. However, people don't often realize that PMS has an evil stepsister, PMDD. PMDD is a more severe version of PMS that is classified as a mental illness, specifically a depressive disorder, by the leading psychiatric authority in the US, the DSM-5. Like PMS, it appears in the week before menses and disappears within a few days of menstruation. People afflicted with PMDD must have at least one of the following during that time period. Mood swings, increased irritability, depression, and or anxiety. Other symptoms include disinterest in day-to-day -day activities, difficulty concentrating, being easily fatigued, hypersomnia or insomnia, a sense of being overwhelmed or out of control, and physical symptoms such as breast tenderness or swelling, joint or muscle pain, or bloating. PMDD is separate from other mental disorders such as depressive or anxiety disorders and is not related to substance abuse. The DSM-5 conservatively estimates that between 1.8 and 5.8% of menstruating people have this disorder. To put this in perspective, there are approximately 15,300 students at the University of New Hampshire, 54% of them female. This means that there are approximately between 149 and 479 people on campus that have PMDD. Now, the Merck Manual says that SSRIs, SNRIs, and Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, can help with the emotional aspects of the disorder. The DSM-5 says that birth control pills have lowered the number of complaints doctors receive. But both of those statements are missing the point. There is no set cure for PMDD, and one will not exist until there is a widespread call for research on the issue, an issue that is plagued by taboo. At the intersection of mental illnesses and women's reproductive health, PMDD is affected by the stigma surrounding both issues. Approximately 60 million Americans experience mental illness per year, but an estimated 40% of these people do not get the correct amount of care. Stigma is a significant barrier to this care. Such stigma spread by sensationalist media coverage often associates mental illness with violence. This leads to discrimination against people with mental illnesses and a lack of research on the topic. According to the University of Sydney, in traditional culture and religious teachings, menstruating girls and women were deemed dirty, impure, or unclean. This view of menstruation remains embedded within today's society, leaving females disempowered and ashamed of menstruation. If periods are regarded as dirty by the public, then how can associated issues like PMDD be regarded as a valid issue? As a result of those issues, PMDD is underdiagnosed and flies over the minds of physicians and patients alike. We need to have a campaign to educate the public. Posters can provide preliminary self-screening for people wondering if they have it, and presentations can spread the word to many people simultaneously. If you are part of either the medical or research community, step up and urge your colleagues to take action. Thank you. This has been Emily Duffy with Musings of an Undergrad. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.